Wizard. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me as always is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing today, Will? I am doing very well today, Sarah. Happy, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. I'm pretty sure this is the earliest we've ever recorded. I think so, as far as a weekday, for sure. For sure, we're yeah. as far as a, as far as a, a working week, for sure, it's definitely the earliest we've recorded. I think we've done some afternoons on weekends, or, yes. or, or early or early evenings. But uh, to kick things off, you're gonna update on what some notable items from New York Comic Con. Yeah, well, yeah, New York Comic Con was this weekend, but uh, but first, just to kick off some breaking news that happened earlier today, and it's really not breaking because we all. But, it was just a matter of when this was going to happen, not if. And Marvel has and Disney has removed Blade from the 2025 calendar and it has delayed it indefinitely. So it was originally supposed to come out on November 7 of next year, but um, now uh, it's uh, Predator Badlands has taken that that date. And um, and yeah, and, and Blade is just uh, you know this is what it's it's truly is. One of those movies that uh, it's uh, several others that were all delayed for for years and for rewrites and other things, or or it it may just be like uh, some of the Star Wars movies where something that was announced and it may just may just not happen. We shall yeah, see. Yeah, I don't think it's happening. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. At this rate, I mean, I know part of it was you know, Bob Iger did uh, note earlier this year that uh, you know marvel's only going to do i think three movies per year so i mean writing was already on the wall there given that i think thunderbirds and uh thunderbolts excuse me and captain america 4 and uh, what else is coming out next year as far as some films i think there's one other fantastic four yeah and fantastic four yeah so yeah since those all those three had to, had already are in production or finished and so yeah it's it, it is getting bounced yeah, there was no way Blade was going to make a 2025 release date. Yeah, yeah. And who knows when. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yep. So yeah. that's that's the news on Blade. Um, also, yes, there there was New York Comic Con this weekend. We got the first trailer uh, for uh, Creature Comforts, which is the uh, first uh, official outing from DC Studios, uh, right, created by James Gunn. It's the animated feature uh, coming uh, on December the 5th of this year. And um, really fun trailer, you know, Amanda Waller uh, is, is is in it, so, um, and also Rick Flagg, and then we see all the various creatures who are Inhumans, and and, and re- we get a little tagline in the trailer for, for why Waller can't use them, uh, re- use humans, human operatives anymore, so that she's going to use these folks to do these suicide-esque missions, and also got like a lot of Doom Patrol with one of the characters kind of reminded me of a uh, of, uh, Cliff, uh, uh, GI robot. What you, yeah. Wait, what do you yeah. mean they're inhumans? So creature comforts, they're they're not. Yeah, so they're like you know the weasel, you know from we, we, we is in there that we were introduced in Suicide Squad. Uh, GI well, robot. Do they, um, yeah. Do they actually call them inhumans? Not like Marvel. That was just a little like well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just weird though that in DC they would also have a group of people that were dubbed Inhumans, yeah, not to be yeah. confused with the MCU Inhumans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all creatures like the yeah. I think there's like Mrs. Mrs. Frankenstein. So you know the Bride of Frankenstein. One of the characters is, I think her nickname is the Bride because they in the, in the trailer they like introduce all the creature creature commandos that uh, that will be in the series. And, um, and yeah, so um, you know, so we get a little. It's about a, I guess, about a three minute trailer. Uh, and um, yeah, I just watched it this evening for the first time, right before recording. But um, but yeah, that was that was one of the items from New York Comic Con. Um, Marvel, of course, we 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 knew that Daredevil was coming in March of next year, and we got the official release date for it. It's March the fourth, and um, and then uh, there were a few just comic book related items uh that was a part of that of the um some batman stuff and some uh, other titles but then uh star trek also had a presentation at new york comic-con and uh, 
Got a, a teaser, another clip from uh, Star Trek Lower Decks, which actually premieres this weekend uh, on the 26th for its uh, fifth and final season. Uh, we also got some casting news for uh, Strange New Worlds. Uh, 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 Reese Darby is going to be playing a legacy character. They didn't name the character uh, in, in the upcoming season of uh, Strange New Worlds. It was also announced that uh, Strange New Worlds uh, was also renewed for a fourth season. And uh, and the new Starfleet Academy show that has uh, Holly Hunter and Paul Giamatti, they've also added uh, Tatiana Maslany from She-Hulk and uh, Orange is New Black um, as a character in this upcoming season, of the, sh- the premiere season of the show. And also it was announced that the series is all- it was already renewed for a second season. So... Those are some of the notable Star Trek news items that uh, I was hoping to do a video on, but uh, just life happened and wasn't able to do so. But uh, but that's some of the notable items from New York Comic Con. Did you talk about Marvel? Uh, just bla- uh, just Daredevil. I mean, unless there was something else. Oh, but okay, I, okay. Yeah. I didn't I didn't hear that for some reason, so I yeah. was just the lag the lag the lag may have returned. <laughs> no, no, I don't okay. I don't think it was the lag. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> You just um, tuned out. You, okay. you tuned out when I was talking about DC stuff and when I transitioned to Marvel. A little like, oh. bit, a little bit. I was just like, okay, okay. I mean, I mean, I segued way into it, and then you're like, no, I want to talk about Blade first. And so then I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna let him do this whole section, <laughs> and then we're gonna lead into things that I actually have some thoughts about, um, which includes Agatha all along, episode six. Fem- Six familiar by thy side. The familiar teen is much more than he seems, and his connections to the rest of the coven are revealed. So it I kind of wish this episode of Agatha All Along aired last week. Mm-hmm. Uh just because of the great conversation we had about the the premiere episodes for both Agatha All Along and the Penguin. Um, having them both be spinoffs of um, of movies and and TV shows that we've seen before, and there have been a long layover period, and just how they attacked that, reintroducing you to the character and the world um, in very different ways um, that worked for the most part. Mm-hmm. And so now, now we have on Agatha all along, we have the flashback episode for the teen um and i couldn't help but thinking about how like okay so we're getting this episode and last week on the penguin we got sophia's origin story which was a flashback episode for the most part mm-hmm. and how again they they both did it in different ways that for the most part worked um it threw me off in the first five minutes i'm like I'm like, what? What is happening here? <laughs> why? Why are we? He's Jewish. <laughs> what? Yeah. What's going on? Because I, we knew he, who he was. We right. we knew he was pretty much 99% Wiccan, mm-hmm. um, and one of one of the twins, one of the Maximoff twins. So. That wasn't a a surprise and didn't throw me, but I never thought about that idea that, well, like, he, it's magic that was used. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just like it was magic that took over Westview. Mm -hmm. So I never had, I never reconciled or had that thought of like, oh, so he obviously hasn't always been Wanda's kid. Yeah. So so it's just, and that's a very tricky thing to A, get the viewers on board with, and also make it semi-logical to where it's like, okay, I get what's going on here. I get it. He's he's kind of he's kind of a little bit of both. Like his memories are now replaced with with the the that week because it was it wasn't a long period of time that right. she had control over Westview, right? That's right. Yeah, it was a very short yeah. time. Yeah. Very short time. Like, but all of his memories, because the the twins grew up very fast. 
during mm -hmm. WandaVision um, are replaced and specifically his longing for his brother. So, but, um, but yeah, I mean, what were you, were you as thrown off when, when we started with a Jewish bar mitzvah opening of what was happening? Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually uh, I was because you know as as I mentioned on the uh, podcast last week, um, you know, I'm really as far as Wiccan and 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 Billy Maximoff, all all those stories, you know, I, I did not read the comics, so I I I was not aware um, of the origin story uh, of of Billy uh, Maximoff, you know, beyond what we saw in, in WandaVision. So when we when we we do get this start, I, I was like you. I was like, huh? Now wait a minute. How does how does Billy Kaplan become Billy? You know, William Kaplan become Billy Maximoff? And mm -hmm. and, and 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 so. But you're right. I mean, the way that it was, the story was constructed, and when they were, you know, when they were driving down the street and had the accident and stuff. And then right before, you know, and we as we see the hex uh, starting to collapse, mm -hmm. uh, that then I was just like, uh huh. And then it, that's when it clicked um, for me that oh, okay, I see. But you know, but even at that, it was still, you know, even after the accident and stuff, um, I it, it 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 made logical sense. Then once we heard we heard Billy and Tommy, and you know, I think briefly. You know, as the hex is like collapsing, hearing the voices, and then you know, mm -hmm. Billy wakes up and like he's like, oh, you know, you know, when he in the hospital, then I was like, okay, I see what they did here, and and really wanted to, you know, just as I was doing prep for the show tonight, I guess the origins pretty much tracks with what was done in the comics. The the, the major difference was just um, in the show. Billy retains the memories of being Billy Maximoff, whereas in the comic he he doesn't uh, he doesn't remember uh, his past life. But other than that, the, the origins were pretty much you know pretty much tracked that you know, that Billy well, William was replaced by Billy. Yeah, yeah. the The other thing that threw me was in this cold opening sequence with the bar mitzvah. There is a fortune teller booth, and he goes mm -hmm. in there, mm -hmm. and we see Leela, who's a part of the coven, and she, and I, so there's a few ways to interpret the scene, I think, yeah. but from what I, what I saw, it almost looked like she was possessed by somebody else, and she did the sigil. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, yeah. there were these weird moments of, like, where they were talking and she was normal and then all of a sudden it felt like she was somebody else yeah i agree i agree especially it, it makes sense to what knowing what we know up to the point in the, in the story because she doesn't you know whenever she ran into the team she doesn't seem to have any it, it or or um uh jen or or um as well you know because she was the police officer who arrived on the scene i mean none of them have any yeah. recollection of you know, Billy, the team before. Right, right, right. And no, and, and, but, but it's also didn't looking back at when they went, when I think it was the second episode, when they did their little recruitment of all the witches, mm -hmm. it wasn't as though Billy recognized them either. Right, right. Exactly. So, yeah, the only one he might have would be um would be um isn't it Jennifer? Yeah, the, yeah, Jen, Jen's the uh, YouTuber. Yeah. It was a, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, and is it well I guess yeah. it was Alice. It was Alice the one that um was the police officer. My bad. I yeah, got the it's yeah. Alice who's the police officer. Yeah. But I was uh, like to go back to Leela, I was just thrown off by the sigil and then there's a great line, are we looking behind or ahead? Mm -hmm. um, and there there was just some really good foreshadowing occurring, occurring in the dialogue of that whole sequence yeah. um, with those characters that I really appreciated. And it wasn't overdone no. that they sometimes do. It was more just 
added mystery, added tension to what's going to happen. Because another thing that threw me to go back to what you were saying, like, it wasn't that initially when I saw the hex or when they got word, like something's happening in Westview, I was like, I was like, oh, so he's going to get trapped on the other Mm -hmm. side away from his Mm -hmm. parents. But no, this was when it was being destroyed. So and and they got in the car accident. So so it, it, it kind of what this episode kept doing was I thought I had an expectation of what they would do. And then they they want a different way. Yeah. And I'm not mad at it. <laughs> oh, me, me neither. I, I thought I thought the same thing, too, that they were going to get, you know, that that they were going to end up in Westview as well. I mean, I thought that was be, be the way that they would, you know, that, that somehow that's how he becomes Billy. But in Westview as the, as the hex collapse, but I, I agree. I, I don't have any issues with it. And, and I, it, the foreshadowing too, as far as like, you know, with the palm reading and, and the broken line and, uh, and, and she's like, your life will have to split in two. And, you know, it, and you, you know, when it says something, I'm paraphrasing here, but you know, you'll be a new man. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's part of that whenever she, Lila was doing that reading. So it, it, you're right. I mean, the foreshadowing was, was all there. And this, this is when like, this is when the MCU is like kicking on all cylinders when it's doing these types of this type of storytelling. Yeah, yeah. The tower reversed, I think, mm-hmm. is what she says before she actually draws or writes the sigil. Yeah. Um, which it looks like a road, which mm-hmm. is road that we've mm-hmm. been on forever. <laughs> <laughs> um and and then that just leads us where essentially he he wakes up very disoriented, very confused, of starts to immediately read minds of his parents and um and then we learn because then they jump ahead to more not present day but pre like how he how what leads him to meet up um to Agatha like what what he's doing mm-hmm. um the 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 days leading up to when he breaks into Agatha's home and um and and the other thing that threw me off is is I wasn't expecting Evan Peters to return. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> that was a great touch. Yeah. <laughs> I'd completely yeah. forgotten about that Boner. whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, how could you forget Ralph Boner? I mean, I, no, I, yeah. As soon as he, sh- I was like, "That's that's Ralph Boner." Yeah. Whatever, whatever Billy was doing the, uh, I guess the Google research and and and, and all that, um, just to figure out the story. But also just, you know, to that point, you know, thinking about the room too, as far as just seeing the transitions between William Kaplan, you know, and then and then three years later, how the Billy has taken on. Again, the new life and, and everything else. I think that was just a, a, again another nod to like all you know the, the attention to detail for to, to, you know again to remind us as the viewer that this is a different person. Right, right. And and he he has a very sweet moment with his boyfriend where he where he lets him in on this secret. This mm-hmm. I've died, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which it doesn't scare him away, and I'm not sure what that says about his boyfriend, <laughs> but but it allows them to kind of team up, so we're not just following him silently on this um, escapade that ultimately leads him to Agatha. But it's yeah. more yeah. like he has a partner in this, um, yeah. which is very much needed. For sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm trying to think of any. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, and I was just going to say, you know, the other thing that stood out to me is uh, with this episode, given that we took a break from the the trials, um, was there were still like, you know, in, in the prior trials we've had nods to like different periods, de- different decades, um, but even even with this episode, they still had nods to other TV series and movies and stuff. And you know, one that really just jumped out to me immediately was when they were with um, Ralph in the garage. I couldn't help but think of a uh, Deep Throat and uh, All the President's Men uh, with Woodward yeah. Bernstein. Yeah, with uh, Woodward meeting. Uh, you know, the 
deep throat in the garage uh, learn all the mm-hmm. secrets about watergate so and, and, and there were some others uh, others as well but that was the, the that was the most uh, you know jumping off the screen one for me uh and this this week yeah yeah that's that's a good um shout out and and decades wise i mean the teen is basically a 90s goth mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep yep there, there's some definite nostalgia, not not quite on the nose as as mm-hmm. the previous episodes, but yeah, they still maintain that. Um, yeah. They had a, some musical element as we even hear him listen to his um, goth music, mm-hmm. which is ding dong. Yep. <laughs> down, down, down. Yep, that's it. They, yeah, it's like contractually obligated that that song has to appear in the episode. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just waiting for them to come out with the music video for that. Yeah. I mean, what was that thing that happened? I think it was with um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Or, it, yeah. You know what I'm sa- talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about with, uh, with, um, oh gosh, what's the character's name? I can't remember, but it was like they were in the club, and uh, Baron, uh, the Baron, uh, you know. Just, yeah. Yeah, with the house music and all that kind of stuff, just rock it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had a whole, yeah, a whole segment about that, a whole video that they released on that for like for on YouTube. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> is is Power Broker gonna appear in Cap Four? Um, you know that's a good question. I don't know. I I just I just to, just to digress for just a second. I I, I saw where like early audience screenings for Cap. Cap four were were disappointing, but we'll we'll you know we'll we'll see, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, I saw I saw the Joker too, so yeah, yeah, I still <laughs> haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I'm pretty sure it's gonna do a little bit better than that, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I it, it's 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 also I mean that's kind of disappointing and already like starts to plant a seed of doubt. But I also wasn't thinking that that was going to be the best movie ever, the yeah. way Joker 2 was yeah. kind of explained and had the <laughs> chance. Um, yeah. But but I digress. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's and then we we eventually get to where we we left things with uh, with Wiccan revealing himself in a way, the sigil breaking. Um, mm-hmm. He kills Leela and Jen, and now it's just so. Here's here's my question: Why yeah. why did Agatha survive? I mean, I know the show is called Agatha all along, but why did Agatha survive and the no one else? Bot armor. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a better explanation than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's just they like brush it over under the rug. They had no explanation for why she was able to and i'm just like okay i guess yeah. it, the show isn't called billy all along so i get yeah. it but yeah. <laughs> it's so weird to me yeah. i wish i had a better explanation and listeners if you have one you know you know drop it in a comment you know uh then let us know but that's the only one that's the first thing that comes to mind for me <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. i i I also am a little pissed off at Disney Plus because I'm on the subscription plan with commercials. Mm. And I swear mm. to God, Will, you will never guess what they did. Oh. I'm starting this episode. It goes to the first commercial break. And they do mm. a weird preview for the remaining two episodes of Agatha all along. And <sighs> so part of the preview is the ending of this episode where she comes out of the mud and is uh, like, what does Billy Maximoff? And I'm like, I'm like, what? Why am I seeing this right now? I'm in act uh, one. Jeez. <laughs> Get it together, Disney. <laughs> I just, I could not, like, this is the first time they've done that. And I've been watching this entire show mm-hmm. on this subscription plan since september so i have no idea where that came from but my god that was that was really and and i also i'm just sitting here like so they're pretty much spoiling i don't know 
50% of each half hour episode with this very long trailer <laughs> for the final two episodes. <laughs> it just, I mean, I mean, granted, it's not that the line itself, like, what does Billy Maximoff want at the end of the road? Like, yeah. I, I, you know, you know, like it's going to be ultimately his brother, right? Um, right. which, which is, um, not necessarily a surprise because they do bring up multiple times just to remind the audience we're talking about twins, we're talking mm-hmm. about twins, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's the name <laughs> that he first says when he wakes up, like they were together and now they're separated, and now. There's a big mystery of like, well, I am curious of what happened to the other one and like if they'll reconnect or if mm-hmm. they'll like, but also just like what happened to it. Yeah. Like, it's not necessarily just about the what like them finding each other and reconnecting as twins, but also, but seriously, what happened there? <laughs> yeah, 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 Ex- <laughs> exactly. It would have been weird though had he possessed like his twin brother possessed the body of like uh William's mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again, yeah. Again, plot convenience. <laughs> plot convenience. Plot convenience. Well, I guess um, well, I guess but I guess for that to happen, I guess Billy's mom would have had to have died. But, but again, again, plot convenience. Yeah. Do you oh, do you, okay. Now I guess that does say something mm. that is is a little interesting, especially when we're talking about a show that's very maternal, sons mm. and mothers. And she says, um, it can't be your mom because she chose a town of strangers over her own flesh and wires. Mm. Do you think, because Billy re- did retain his memories from that time period of growing up as a Maximoff, he resents his mom for the choice she made. Oh, that's a good question. Because I've might. also never thought about that before either, about yeah. what the perception of those those boys were knowing, like, A, their mom literally brought them in to the mm-hmm. world and yeah. then ultimately decided, like, no, you got to go because... Like I'm damaging a bunch of other people keeping you here. That's 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 a good point. I mean, he may he may do so. Um, mm-hmm. And then also, I mean, also just thinking of the, the events of uh, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. Um, mm-hmm. You know, how does that all inter- you know with her ultimately, you know, going her with her wanting going completely evil in, in that movie. Right. Um, you know. Do, how how does he reconcile that with 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 the excellent point you just raised about whether or not he feels resentment uh, towards her because of the choice she made? Right, and I think that it also is interesting, and I don't know if hypocrisy is the right word, but having Agatha say that, knowing now that we know her history of being a mom. And giving up a child. Mm-hmm. Like, like there, there's some, some, wait, wait a second. So you're making a dig at Wanda's parenting and yet you kind of did the same thing. Yep. Like you, you might have not chosen a town full of strangers, but from what we heard, you chose power. So yep. I, I think, I think it's, uh, it's interesting now that we know the backstory more of Billy that these two characters, I mean, we're seeing both sides of this, this kind of argument or this um, rift between a parent, specifically a mother abandoning um, a child. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's taken us a while to get here, but um I, I'm glad we're here. And um, even though I feel like the last two episodes have been spoiled up to me with that ridiculous <laughs> story, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still like, you know, say what you will about Marvel's 
uh, finales, they do know how to deliver a penultimate episode. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. And we still got, and we, the thing is, we have three left, you know? Oh, we have three left. I thought we just had two left. Uh, so this was episode six, so we got seven, eight, and nine. It's a nine episode season. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could so have we'll sworn there. Because we'll get episode seven next week, and then um, and then they'll wrap it up uh, with a two episode finale. It's not that I don't believe you, but I distinctly remember looking this up, and I could have yeah, sworn talked, that we, we would have been about, close. Now we talked about it last week because episode seven will drop tomorrow, and then right in time for Halloween they'll drop. Uh, episode Got it. Nine. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I got it. All right. Yeah. That makes yeah. that makes more sense. Yeah. Well, well, well. Then hopefully the penultimate um, delivers like this episode did. Yeah. Um, and anything else you want to add in before we move on to the penguin? No, no. I think uh, I think we covered everything um, with this episode, and um, it, I, you know, this again as a as a I know last week I was kind of uh, about the series, and even though it wasn't bad. It was not, it didn't, you know, up to that point, we had some pretty solid episodes. This one was, this one was, was very, very good. Really enjoyed it. And hopefully the remaining three will, 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 will keep this momentum as we move forward. Yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely have some, we have two characters. We understand their motivations and they both have, we're both curious about some choices they'll make and some potential confrontations. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So, for <laughs> sure. All right. Well, that leads us to the Penguin episode five homecoming um, with his nascent operation at stake. Oz makes a desperate move to turn the tables. Meanwhile, Sophia strives to build a new legacy for herself as a gigante. <laughs> Added in that last part. <laughs> um, Will, what are some of your overall thoughts? Overall thoughts about Homecoming? Yeah, escalation. I think I think is what what if I had to sum it up in one word. Um, and just expand on that. I mean, just everything that happened. You know, last week's episode was just. You know, phenomenal. I think I I call it riveting. Uh, and and this week's episode really just took them what happened there and just you know took it up a level. You know, we do get more of Oz this week, and uh, and um, and of course Sophia and her uh, yeah, continues to go on a path that um, while you know how she is planning on building her family and, and and her own crime family now in Gotham. And so, you know, this, this episode truly did escalate a lot of things pull, you know, again, got now that, as I mentioned before, with the earlier episodes, we, you know, we sort of got introduced to these characters. Now all the, all the chess pieces are, are being moved across the board. Oz is also, you know, he moves his chess piece, but of course, Oz's own short-sightedness again gets the gets uh gets uh hamstrings him but uh but you know but he manages to rebound but those are just some some quick overall thoughts as far as the episode itself yeah this uh reminds me a lot of episode two um Mm -hmm. in terms of the moving parts the different angles at play um trying to think about where so so we 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 start off essentially where we ended um in a way previously because we we see um them burning the car um and then and then we we hear a rex calibre story um from oz he's the same person that was mentioned in the first episode when he was talking to al correct that's correct Okay. Okay. Yep. Here, here's some. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this out here because it came to my mind earlier today, um, and I have no idea. Is there a chance that this Rex guy, who we keep hearing about, who nobody else seems to have ever heard of, is Oz's actual father? Um, that's a you know that's a very good question and a good point because, you know. Rex in the comics before it was retconned 
was originally uh, Selena Cowell's father. Mm, okay. And and then in the uh, you know, but for 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 the Matt Reeves the Batman verse, we yep. we discussed this and you know we discussed this last week yep. or maybe the week before. He was now you know Carmine's Falcone's. Carmine. Yeah, yeah Carmine's um, is Selena's father. So maybe in yep. this story it was maybe that's and maybe that's sort of the tie-in between uh, Rex and. Um, and 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 why and Oz's mother uh, that that makes total sense because I think right you know, I know, yeah that could be that could be the play here um, it, why there it, there's that affection there yeah it's it's also just we we definitely know like her, the mom raised the boys and she she makes references but we never hear a surname. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just it's just interesting. It's just something that I'm like, why do you, it's funny how he always refers to this gangster, this yeah. like one particular person um, that had a big influence. And it might not be his father, but it could be that he's also a bastard. So, yeah, yeah, it could um, be that. But he clearly sees it, him as a father figure. It's sort of like yeah. the role he's playing that uh, he is sort of stepping in now for for Vic, given that his father's oh, yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then he he rounds up the boys um to help to and gets them to help him um take out the Moronies who have stolen the mushrooms. And this leads to logically them kidnapping Sal and um Nadia's son. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, Vic you know Vic, Vic learned how to fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vic Vic stepped up his game for sure. He he really yeah. wanted in on the action, and then immediately put on the bench for mom yep. sitting. But we'll get into <laughs> that in a moment. <laughs> um, and along the way, he learns about how Sophia has um, and her recent actions of taking her own family off the table um, uh, with a gas leak, leak, mm-hmm. and and John Vitti survived. Yep. Yep. And we, and we got it. We got so, the we got the corrupt cop from uh, we got the, the the police chief actually who was a little tie in from the uh, from the Batman movie. Uh, I remember that 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 uh, the, I guess it was the voice more than than his appearance that I remember from the Batman. Whenever uh, Sophia, whenever, yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, I know yeah. yeah, I know who you're talking about, but I don't yeah. remember him from the movie itself. The voice mm. just drove me crazy though. This entire yeah. episode. <laughs> That's why I think you probably remembered him. <laughs> but I love the way um, Sophia just like, you know, talked, you know, she was like, yeah, you know, play with how she just played that game while she was was talking to the chief. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, she 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 definitely has a plan. Um yeah. what what are your thoughts about her conversation with John Vitti, who she mm-hmm. basically holds hostage for most of the episode, and then ultimately her um, her using him to get everyone, bring everyone to the table, and then within a minute shooting him dead on the spot. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, uh-huh. like, think about that. Yeah, so, you know, it was the whole conversation because I, I, we, you know, we wonder why of all, of all people, you know, she, she spared him. And then, of course, we learned the reason why because he, you know, he knew where Carmine's, you know, hidden money was. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, but, uh, I, you know, honestly, whenever she had him there in the, uh, in the, in the cellar, I guess, where I guess the, uh, I guess the catacombs where the family's all, where the family's buried, literally. Um, I thought that she, I honestly thought she was going to kill him there. After she, you know, I thought right. she was going to just talk, you know, with with the, the cold water and everything else, and the whole story about, you know, you know, we we learned that, uh, you know, Vidi and and Sophia's mom were cousins and, and everything. I I really thought after she, you know, he was going to spill the beans and then she was going to off him then, but I love, but. I, it made total sense why she spared him and then why she used him that way to get get the loyalty of 
all all of the you know Falcone uh, muscle men there uh, mm-hmm. in the room. It was you know it was I thought about you know thought about other gangster movies and you know whenever she kissed kiss johnny on the uh back of the head and uh, i was listening to the uh official penguin podcast and they were talking about that moment and the whole the whole kiss of death and yeah uh, you, know, you see that in a lot of you know the, a lot of this the, the genre um with uh gangster movies and stuff and you know they had a very interesting discussion about is it a chicken or the egg which was it really from the mob first or did hollywood was that hollywood invention but either way i thought that was just uh a great uh you know really just was the final straw and then you know and, the, and this happened when when the moment happened i was just seeing, seeing the blood spill all over the table and like you're see, you know soaking the blood and i was like man the blood money there uh yeah. literally this visually yeah. it was just like so it was just the visceral nature of it was just so like gripping and well, and it it yeah. felt like it was a scene shot from a classic gob- mobster gangster yeah. movie yeah, like it, that's why I still that there's not enough references to like that genre that people mm-hmm. are talking about. They're just sticking to Breaking Bad mainly. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was what Godfather Two, if I recall. <laughs> that yeah. yeah, right, yeah. right. It's just yeah. Um, I I one thing about for me, um the conversation between Sophia and John Vitti in the catacombs. Um, is it just me or was he in love with his cousin? <laughs> it, <laughs> there, it, it seemed that way. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there were some weird pauses and just the way he was saying things. I'm just like, so, so are I get you, but you feel guilty because you introduced them Mm-hmm. Is it you feel guilty or you wanted her for yourself? I don't understand what's going on here. Um, and we already know you were hooking up with Luca's wife. And yep. so who knows? Maybe she's yep. a second cousin. I don't I don't know. Um, but but I just want to point that out. And and also um, to stick on Sophia for just a, a few more minutes. Uh, Julian. Mm hmm. Okay, so Julian basically proposed, right? <laughs> basically <laughs> said, it's going to be you and me as long as you'll have me. I am subservient to you. I just want to be in on it with you. Let me kiss kiss, kiss the ring. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The weirdest yeah, Jul- proposal ever. <laughs> But. Yeah, I'll, yeah, he's just uh, yeah. There's so many levels to that to that real his fascination with her. Um, because that's a fast. It's a it's it's like a fascination of just like seeing like how her family like treated her, and and you know how she managed to 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 rise above all of this, uh, and, and become you know become. You know, Sophia Gigante, uh, the, the new the new crime boss, but also I think just his role and I think he's you know he's feeling you know we talked about this before the guilt that he's feeling, you know maybe he went into Arkham with good intentions and now he's just trying to rec- you know trying to make amends um, you know for the guilt that he feels for you know standing by while she was while she was uh, uh, abused by the system. And, and and Carmine, right. you know, yeah. So I mean, it, it, uh, their relationship is just one of the more fascinating el- elements of the show f- for me. And, see, and seeing, and, yeah. and, and I'm just curious to see where where it leads. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure if I'm as fascinated or just a bit disturbed by it. Just mm-hmm. a bit like Maybe that's, what yeah. what's your angle here? Because I I I think it's more of the guilt. But then again, you you also. So, like heard about the deaths, the Mar- Maronis, the multiple deaths, and then mm-hmm. immediately was like, oh, that's that's Sophia. I want to be a part of this. Yeah. Like so, so do you? Are you still guilty for what you helped create in her, or are you are you now like, oh, you're like me, or I want to be? I like, I don't know. I I, it's I just, think he. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I think the fact that now, now that he saw what she did to the, the Falcons, yeah, he, he wants to part of this. 
Yeah. I think, I well, think right. well, that's what he says. He, he's like yeah. something along the lines of, I saw the release that it mm -hmm. did for you and the freedom, and I want that. And, and maybe that's what it is. Like, yeah. I, I need to be a part of something to release myself from this this person who did some horror horrific things to multiple people in Arkham. Mm -hmm. Um, so now I'm just going to join up in a gangster mob so I can probably kill people to get that yeah. right. <laughs> 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 it's, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of, I kind of yeah. feel yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense though. That makes total sense. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and, and, and we, she, she does announce the, the Giganti family name. So she's taken her mom's name. The, um, she's not going to uphold her father's legacy for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what I heard, and and that just made me question: Are we watching the same show as everyone else? Apparently, some viewers have this theory that it wasn't Carmine who killed. Isabella. It was it was Al. No. No, it was her, it was Carmine. Yeah, yeah. The that theory doesn't fly because yeah. we know for the fact that Car that Al helped get Sophia out. And the right. only time that she could be free was right after Carmine died. Like right. Like and Carmine, it's not like it's not as though Carmine finds out that Al's the hangman and then throws Sophie under the bus because he's already written off his son. Mm -hmm. Like we saw that dinner scene. So I, I just had to throw that out there that I think that's a ridiculous theory and makes me just mean like, are we watching the same show, people? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because to me that, that just undermines everything that how what they've established here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there's so many f holes in that where I'm like, I, I feel yeah. like you're just trying to create a theory for the sake of having one when they've explained the events yeah. that happened very, yeah. Yeah. very concisely. What they have not explained to me, mm -hmm. my, my mm -hmm. a, a big nitpick I have with this episode is is the the um, the sal of it all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause, cause, Oz sends someone to to shank Sal in mm -hmm. in the jail, right? Yep, right. And then later, we get he gets a call, and it's not it's not who he ex expected on the other line. It's not Mike. Mike's dead. It's Sal. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I know, Sal's in this cabin. Mm -hmm. No, no longer in jail. So mm -hmm. so he goes from being in jail. To no longer being to getting shanked, to no longer being in jail, and then, and then obviously Sophia knows really quickly how to find him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like she's got she's got good what? people. Yeah. I like I don't know what I had to take a bigger issue with. Like Sophia just me, like instantly knowing where he is, which yeah I could I could probably like make make some logic to that but the whole he's shanked and next thing we know he's picking up the phone in arc or in in jail and then the next thing we know he's free yeah yeah make sense <laughs> um well i mean because i mean most of the maroney well because several of the maroney henchmen well i guess so at that point, by that point, he knows that Nadia and his son are dead. Correct, if I recall. By what point? At the by the time he was at the cabin, because I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he, yeah, because yeah. Oz told him on the phone. Yeah, he told him on the phone. Yeah, so I guess I get so, so he gets shanked. He, you know, clearly someone else. He, 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 you know, help us. He gets the keys. He gets out. Um, yeah, and I guess he just gets one of his his henchmen to like get him up there and get his medical treatment. I mean, I, I you know, I guess we just have to like this. That is that's maybe that's just uh, that transition was just left on the editing floor for for time. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, oh, but, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It yeah. was. 
It was either but, left on the editing floor or it was just like, we're going to try to, like like you said at the very beginning, like this is all about escalation and mainly mm -hmm. focused on Oz and everything turning against him. So mm -hmm. we have to keep that momentum. So we, we can't explain or show yeah. exactly how these other characters are moving, but we have to get them to very specific yeah. places. Yeah. And, and here's um, where also, yeah, that, and also here's where, you know, we, we are still in the comic book universe. So this is where the comic book stuff yeah. sort of fits in here. <laughs> a little, folks, I yeah. don't know if that's, that's a comic book flaw or just sometimes television in general has yeah. those. Well, for plot conveniences, we need to, <laughs> we yeah, can't yeah. show every little detail yeah. about, about this side character. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, and then and then that just that just leaves us well, that leaves us with both Oz and then the Vic storyline. Um yeah, yeah. and and so so with Vic, like mm -hmm. like you said before, he's placed on mom's sitting. Yep. And something else I am not hearing too many people talk about, yep. but it was really abundantly clear in watching this episode. The actress who plays um, plays Oz's mom. Mm -hmm. The fact that they're both able to talk in a certain cadence, mm -hmm. we're just like, oh my god, <laughs> like that. That's that is definitely his his mom. Like yeah. it's mm -hmm. it's just the cadence. It's the humor. Yep. It's just there's there's something so familiar, and then also. The actresses did a fantastic job in this episode because when Vic comes to the house, she, within the span of minutes, goes from viewing him as her dead son. I don't mm -hmm. think, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Oz who she yeah. was viewing because there's a reference to Baseball Glove, who right. I think was John's or somebody's. Mm -hmm. and, and reminiscing to recognition that oh yeah you're a stranger you're not uh, my my son's dead and like you see a more villain villainous an evil or a darkness come out mm -hmm. of her yeah to to just being excited that her son is going to need her help <laughs> because yeah, yeah. he's making moves he's making moves she's <laughs> proud she's proud of she's oh my boy my boy is doing his yeah. thing yeah 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 yeah, it's just, it it was a great display of acting. It if, totally if was. Anything. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah. we as the viewers are also watching this through Vic's eyes. Like, okay, you're a nice old lady. Oh no, and I feel sympathetic to. Are you gonna slap me? To. <laughs> <laughs> to oh you bruised I have to take care of you I'm responsible for you to oh you're a nagging mom <laughs> okay <Yep. laughs> yeah to this to going over to Crown Park you know to Crown Point and, and, it, and it, yeah and you're you're right I mean everything about the the, the mom is like the, the low key MVP of the show <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I mean yeah. I like the line. Talk about VIP parking. Yeah, <laughs> and she, she's was it was it a lamp or I forget what mm -hmm. she had in her hands while yeah. while they were going into the apartment, Francis mm -hmm. Cobb, um, but but all of the work she did and um, we we see Squid. Yes, yeah, from, Squid sees him going in. Yeah, Squid Squid definitely is going to be a player in some future episodes. Um, he's yep. still there. Yep. And yeah. and now they're they're held up in in Crown Point and and uh Francis points out like this side of town is cursed. Yeah. Um and and I almost feel like to an extent I wonder if her other sons died there mm. as opposed to where she's currently living. Oh, I think so. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. I don't know if it was a subtle. I don't know if they were like trying to make the point that Oz that they they they, they came out of Crown Point, and mm -hmm. and now they're on. Or 
or or that's just my interpretation but you know or or similar similar part of town like crown point you know with all the things that they were talking about you know Oz also mentioned in a great view of the city uh and it you know and, and the other thing about that that whole sequence and how, and i love how they you know vic was smart enough to like you know use crown point as the hiding place is you know gotham as, gotham as a character and we talked about this before and 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 and, and really not only Gotham as a character, but also uh, tie in Vic's story that we saw in episode th- with his origins in episode three and how this how it got decimated by the Riddler's uh, terrorist acts to, you know, it, it, it just again, just just really like highlights re- all about Gotham as a character and in, in and of itself. And 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 so how it was used in, in this episode. Uh, not only from you know, like you said, where she was just so proud of what well, Francis was so proud of Oz that she thought he was, you know, he's taking out the Maronis, he's taking out the Falcons, and then the the utter despair whenever he, you know, he, after he's failed, um, and she realizes it, and he's there in the bed, and he's trying to get with her and all that kind of stuff, and that was a very Oedipal like weird thing too that I was this Oedipus like I was like, Ugh. but with their relationship but the disappointment you know with the per- that was that she felt because you know they, they came out of this area and now here we are back again so i, I thought that yeah. was really, yeah yeah i mean the 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 title of homecoming homecoming usually associate with good mm-hmm. um and pleasant but this was almost the reverse yeah where they because of the actions of of oz they are pushed back into this place which they had previously risen and come out of yeah so it and 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 it was interesting at the end of the episode when they're going through the tunnels Mm -hmm. and 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 it's funny because we start the episode with a moment of Oz reminiscing about his youth mm-hmm. to, and we end the episode the same way where he's, he's back in the tunnels that he used to roam around with mm-hmm. his brothers. And instantly my mind goes to the old Batman movies and yep. um, yeah, Batman return and how the penguins hideout was in the tunnels. And I'm like, Oh, this is, mm-hmm. this is so clever. Yeah. And, and then it gets even more clever when when they're like, yeah, we're going to this is the perfect spot for us to grow these mushrooms because yeah. of the humidity. And it just the like when we talk about grounding elements or making the, the superhero genre more realistic, that is what this show is doing to perfection. Um yeah where it's it's hilarious um to me that we're on episode five and we we're in it we're in gotham like Mm -hmm. this place we are very familiar with it for decades yeah for sure (laughs) yeah yeah nobody's thinking to themselves or at least i'm not where's batman yeah like because honestly if you look at everything that has happened why would God, why would Batman suddenly appear? Yeah, you're like, right. They, ha- they haven't done anything. They've killed people. Yeah, but they've also killed each other. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's just a, ga- it's a gang war. Like, and Batman's, yeah, at this point, yeah. he's just, yeah. There's no, I, and, and why that works is also, there's no need for that, a typical hero and I'm not saying that Penguin in any way is an anti-hero. I'm saying the Penguin is the protagonist of the story. Yeah. Now, why he works as a protagonist and you can still root for him is because we're shown like the reasons why to be empathetic. I mean, specifically with his mom and this, mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes it can lead to that Oedipus, but at the same time, you're you see other moments where it's like she she's clearly sick, but you also see the past abuse. Like it's so multifaceted. Yeah. 
that you feel empathy for him. And then his conversation with Eve Carlo and how we've seen that relationship. And, and we understand from her perspective, like, I don't hate her. I'm not mad at her, but I also am just like, I don't know if that was the best decision to suddenly say, Penguin, I'm out. (laughs) You're you're kind of on your own. We need to disassociate because I need to protect what's mine and you need to do you, obviously, because I'm I'm not going down with you. Mm -hmm. Um, So so I'm curious about when she'll show up again in future episodes and and how they'll come to terms or she's living beyond this season. Um, but, but anyway, so we're able to just like, we're able to root for the gangster mom mobsters of like Sopranos of, of Godfather. It's just the family of it all. (laughs) (laughs) And it's just, it's just fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. And like, you know, and, and uh, you know, just to go back to my opening thoughts as far as like, you know, uh, Oz's short sightedness again. And like, and, and you know, and, and you're right, he's not an anti hero, uh, but he is the hero of his own story. And, yeah. and, and whenever he's doing these actions, like when he does, like, you know, whatever. Uh, he, he makes it to the Moroni lab to do the exchange and Nadia is there and, you know, and, and, and the sun comes out and he's all drenched. And I was like, where? I was like, okay. And I'm thinking, you know, my mom went back, honestly, it went back to, to Vidi uh, being mm-hmm. soaked. And then, you know, but then when Oz, lit, you know, lights to the lighter and sets the, you know, trail of gasoline and, you know, and again, bookending the chariot from the beginning of like, you know, when they blew up the car to now this. Yeah. Uh, just the, the fire, you know, just the purging fire. But then in that same moment, again, his short sightedness didn't think that, oh, if we set this where if I set this place off, you know, set them on fire, right. I might set off the, the suppression system and then like destroy all the mushrooms. And and so, it, well, you know, so the mushrooms, yeah. he also asked to see the mushrooms like mm-hmm. they wouldn't have been as destroyed. Like yeah. there, there was a lot of error. Yeah. And yep. what he was doing. Um, there was also that look at mm-hmm. the fire yes. when yes. it was burning. Mm-hmm. And, and now that I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. And now that I'm thinking, I wonder if if by fire is how his brothers died. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Like there, there was a weird, a weird moment there. And usually, when they hold on things, it's it's because of they want to express something without. Yeah. Yeah, I think telling you. Definitely- you. Yeah, that that's a good that's a good theory there because I mean we we had the we had that look both at the beginning whenever the Maserati was blowing, burning up and then also whenever he was burning the burning Nadia and her son. Um, yeah, so there's there's that piece, but you know, but at the same time, you know, he's a survivor and mm-hmm. and, and you know, he managed to to salvage two buckets. And and then as you as you as you described earlier, you know, they, they, whenever he remembered the old trolley system, and that that's we could see, we could see the the progression of how he becomes the gentleman crown boss of of Gotham uh, with with you know the actions that we see at the end of this episode. So, I mean, this show is just so just so well so so well done. I mean, there's so many great great things about it. I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. This, I, yeah. I, I think last week was better than yeah, this it was. week. Um, but um we're we're we got momentum and we're we're being they're being very consistent um yeah. with the story. Yeah. Um and you feel like you're in safe hands because you're like everything is gonna lead to something and and that makes it fun and entertaining um mm-hmm. to watch. It is. It is. All right. Well, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K, on X, formerly known as Twitter. 
And you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.